sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, sins. God, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive, will forgive, our, forgive sins our sins and cleanse and us cleanse from, from all unrighteousness. O Almighty God, merciful Father, most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our introit is from Psalm 95. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me and I lay down my life for the sheep. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God. And a great king above all gods. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, Father, and to the the Son, and and to to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the second chapter of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, And breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be be to God. The second reading is from the second chapter of 1 Peter. This is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? 
But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them all out, or when he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundant. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A rapidly growing technology in our everyday lives is voice recognition, and that is the ability of computers or devices to be able to tell one person's voice from another. They say that we each have an individual, unique voice print, just like our fingerprints. The technology is rapidly being developed. It's already been being used around the world. But at the same time, that technology has been around since the dawn of mankind. God designed our brains to be an incredible information processing system. In all of the mind-boggling technology of voice recognition, it's already programmed into your own mind, and it works without you even having to understand how. But just because it's so ordinary and common to us that we recognize so many different voice prints, we don't ever really stop to be amazed by the huge processing task and identification task that our, our minds go through instantaneously when we recognize, oh, that's mom or dad or my sister or my friend, my coworker from friend, uh, or friend from church or whatever. Not only do we need a finely tuned and working ear, but we also need a brain that can analyze, filter, and distinguish all these enormous amounts of sensory input that are coming in. And most of us can probably identify dozens of different voices, so long as no one is distorting or disguising their voice. One French study was conducted of 44 adults, and they found there was a 99.9% .9 accuracy in identifying friends and family by voice alone, just by hearing the phrase, merci beaucoup, four syllables. And machines were only 92% accurate. But as good as we are at recognizing the voices of those we do know, we are not good at recognizing, obviously, we don't recognize the voice of strangers. Or the less familiar we are with a person, the less reliably we would be able to identify their voice. But what an amazing feat of hearing and brain power. And something even more amazing than the fact that we have that ability is that even newborn infants are able to do it. We are born with that ability. And so that's one of the deepest hardwired or maybe we should say wet-wired, capacities of our human brain. And animals like dogs and sheep are also able to recognize voices. First, we should recognize and marvel and praise God that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Any new technology that is modeled after something God built into creation gives witness to his handiwork, whether or not engineers or inventors were intending to recognize God's handiwork. It's true that the scriptures say all the works of God praise the Lord. Secondly, this voice recognition technology in our human minds can move us to reflect on our reading today and how we recognize the voice of our shepherd, Jesus. Of all the billion voices on planet Earth, one human voice is more important to know than all the rest, the good and loving voice of our shepherd who calls us by name. I only know of one way to recognize someone's voice, familiarity, hearing the sound of their voice frequently. That is how babies learn their mother's voice in their womb. Even before a baby begins to speak or understand what words mean, they can identify their mother's voice. They can even distinguish the sound of foreign languages, according to researchers. And it's the same way that we learn the voices of our families and our friends. We meet, we meet them, we talk with them often and regularly. So also, if you want to know the voice of Jesus, you need to listen to him often. You won't recognize his voice if you never listen to his word. And he is definitely one person from whom we should not be socially distancing. Come into Jesus' presence. Read and hear the words of his voice. Notice that the reading says Jesus calls his sheep by name. He leads them out and they know his voice. Stop and reflect for a moment how precious, 
how tender is it to be known and loved and called by name. Many people are experiencing loneliness and isolation with all the social distancing and stay-at-home orders. And now more than ever, we should re reach out to those who are lonely and isolated around us. A simple call can brighten someone's day. Do you know what it's like to long for, the phone call, for a phone call to ring or to hear the familiar voice of a friend or a loved one or even anybody at all? What does it feel like when there is no one to call us? That's a sad thought but we have one who is called each one of us by name. We have one who knows us and loves us and we can always call on him, Jesus, our shepherd. His voice calls out to us in the scriptures. He invites us to come to him. In the waters of baptism, he called you by name. He puts his precious name on you. You are his and he is yours. When you have a personal relationship with Jesus, he is constant. He is faithful. He knows the deepest troubles of your heart. He loves you with a powerful, sacrificial love. He laid down his life for his sheep when he died on the cross. Even at our loneliest times when no other voices are calling, Jesus is always calling, come follow me. His word is always there for us in the Bible. And when we read it, not just a dry history, not stories about other people, but when we read it as God's story about us and to us, we find that his word speaks to us. It speaks to you and me personally. It speaks comfort to our hearts. It speaks correction to our errors, guidance for our uncertainty. And just in relevant it's just as relevant and lively today as it was thousands of years ago. But there are other voices calling for our attention. Sometimes we are so filled with longing that we fall prey to other voices who mean harm for us. Jesus calls them thieves and robbers. They sneak past the gatekeeper. They climb into the sheep pen and try to steal and harm the sheep. Elsewhere in the scripture, they're called false prophets or false teachers. They're clever at disguising themselves in sheep's clothing or disguising their voice to sound like the shepherd. So we need to beware of fakes and not fall for them. And the very best way is to be familiar with the voice of Jesus. The better we know his voice, the less susceptible we are to be suckered by a fake. There was a strange voice that called to Eve in the Garden of Eden, a seductive voice that lured her into thinking that God was shortchanging her, that sin was an attractive way to become more like God. And so today we have seductive voices that lure us into all kinds of sin, sexual immorality, greed, pride, illegal gain, vanity, addiction, anger, and on and on the list goes. But hiding in those sins are shackles and chains that the devil snaps to our wrists, our ankles, our hearts, and our minds, just as soon as we fall for his lies. He whispers, it's just a little sin. It's not like it's murder. Nobody has to know. It won't hurt anybody. It's your choice. What business is it of God or the church? It's just this once. And then that old familiar lie, did God really say? And whenever that thief, the devil, comes to steal, kill, and destroy with these lies, we need to stop our ears, turn our back on him, and find the voice of Jesus. That's just a little sampling of the thief's lies, however. We see his divisiveness at work as thousands of people are are dying from the coronavirus. The devil stirs up our fears and our anger. We blame each other, we become greedy, people hoard. People take advantage of each other in their distress. Or people are just filled with bitterness and despair. You can always bet on it that when human misery is exploited, it is the continuing work of the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
This past week, I looked at one of Pastor Bowditch's old midweek encouragements, and he had a segment from Paul Harvey, who many years ago said that if he were the devil, one of the things that he would try to do is to get Americans to pray instead of saying, Our Father who art in heaven, to pray, Our Father who art in Washington. And people of all parties are guilty of imagining that if only their candidate or their party is in power, then all things would be right in our country. And so we make idols of our rulers. We grant them greater powers than they rightfully possess or need. But then our human nature shows itself again and again that we will always seek power greater than we rightfully possess or need. But it doesn't matter to the devil what you put as a substitute for God. If you make government and rulers or medicine and technology, wealth and prosperity, sports or leisure, it doesn't matter what you put in God's place. He doesn't care. Just so long as you're not listening to the voice of Jesus. That's the chief aim of the devil, to separate us from God. And that's why we always have to be watchful of his attacks and continually tune our ears in to Jesus' words. So how do we know Jesus' voice? It's not by whether it's higher or lower pitched. It's not by the distinctive sound, but it's by the truth that he consistently spoke. You know, I don't have a voice recording of Jesus, but we do have his word written down for us in the Gospels. We have the sound pattern of his words all through the Bible. And we must always measure the words of any preacher, teacher, or evangelist who says they are preaching the Gospel. Measure it by the Bible. Is Christ proclaimed and upheld or someone else? Is it contradicting God's word or disputing God's divine authority? We recognize Christ's word when we are appointed to him, the one who has the words of eternal life. We recognize his word when our sin is condemned and we are called to repentance. And then forgiveness is proclaimed as the free gift in Jesus' name when the words line up with the rest of the Gospels, when we are called to put our trust in God alone, not in ourselves or earthly power. On the one hand, the devil points us to the easy path to glory. Go around the suffering and through the sin. But Christ calls us to the high road through suffering and by obedience. When the devil's words bring chains Jesus' word cuts through the chains. He loudly calls us to freedom and life. When the devil calls us to hate each other, to divide, to attack and accuse, Christ shows us that flesh and blood, namely other humans, aren't our real enemies, but it's the devil's dark spiritual enterprise that is our enemy. So Christ shows us a difficult path of forgiveness, reconciliation, seeking the truth and turning away from lies and errors down the hard pathway of the cross where there is joy and freedom already now in this life, but more fully in the life to come. Christ's voice spoke peace, shalom, wholeness to his fearful disciples on Easter evening. And it is Christ who knows every one of his sheep down to all your little quirks and your weaknesses. He knows you personally and intimately, but he is also the one who uniquely loves you more deeply than anyone. It is Christ who feels your pain when any one of his sheep is wounded. He is the one who draws near to you to bind up your wounds. So hear his voice, know his voice through constant listening and in answering in the conversation of prayer and praise to him. Call on his name, ask for his help in your challenges, and in your joys and your triumphs, raise a glad song of praise to him. It is a joy to know his voice, and it is a joy to be called by him, our good shepherd. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called by your shepherd, let us come before his throne of grace in prayer on behalf of all people according to their needs. Blessed shepherd, you established your church with your sacrificial death and mighty resurrection. Grant us devotion so that we may abide in the teaching of the apostles and honor the fellowship of the church. Guard us against all enemies of your word and keep us in the care of your flock and under your staff forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty shepherd, you hold in your hands all the might of men, and you hold accountable those who govern your people. Grant to us good government and good leaders who honor your purposes, protect your people, and serve the cause of justice and defend our liberty with wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving shepherd, you love your people. You desire that all would be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Inspire and equip your church and her ministers to speak faithfully and boldly your word and bless those who serve us on your behalf. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious shepherd, you seek the lost and restore the sinner to repentance. Send forth your spirit to rekindle faith in the hearts of those who have fallen away from the truth or have been overcome by temptation and sin. Bring good from ill and increase in all the hunger for your word and a recognition of our need, so that we are gathered to your flock when the church doors are opened wide again. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Merciful shepherd, your wounds are our healing, and your voice calls, to, calls us to you in, your, in our time of need. Hear us on behalf of all those who suffer in body or mind, who grieve those who who, who they love, to whom death draws near. We pray for those who are suffering because of the coronavirus and those who have special needs, especially Randy Spangler, Christian Purley, Tony Spring, Olivia Boomershine, Kaala Kaio, Carlene Stillman, Stan Baskar, Robin Samanti, Peter Belinsky, Sheldon Vega, Jay Bogg, Jacob Hobus, Kainoa Spencer, Lee Twist, Jaden Auguron, Kamile Pyatt, Margie Ulrich, Joan Epler, and Mike Okamura, and all those we name before you in our hearts. Grant them healing according to your will and grace to sustain them in the day of trouble, hope of the new and everlasting life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you promise to be with us in the presence of our enemies. Hear us because we are beset by so many false voices and tempted by so many false gospels. Help us hear your voice and abide safely in your word that remains forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh, good, great shepherd, we pray that you hear your sheep, answer our prayers with mercy, granting us the things that are beneficial to us in our salvation and keeping us away from things harmful. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of Oh, mm -hmm. 
art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. So much everyone for joining us uh, for worship online again and uh, again we're uh, hoping this won't uh, last uh, forever at least uh, not being able to meet in person but we do anticipate uh, at least for a period of time after um, uh, we're allowed to resume meeting in person that we'll probably continue offering an online uh, recording or live live feed of the worship so that uh, those who uh, voluntarily stay home to uh, protect themselves against the virus would continue being able to worship uh, with us. But uh, for the present, uh, this is uh, what we have. And uh, so we are uh, grateful that you made the effort to participate today. Uh, we do also invite you to consider uh, continuing to support the church through your tithes and offerings. Uh, that can be mailing a check-in, that can be arranging uh, payment through uh, your bank account or uh, through PayPal on the church website. Uh, if you need any help figuring out electronic giving options, um, you can uh, speak with uh, Kelly, the secretary, or myself, and uh, we try to help you with that. And uh, again, Bible study hour at 8.30 on Sundays, worship at 10. And uh, anyone else have any specific announcements? Uh, we can uh, take the mute off of your uh, microphones now if you want to greet each other. But does anyone have a special announcement they need to share beforehand? All right, hearing nothing, then I will uh, encourage you to greet one another in the uh, hey, Pastor. Pastor. Uh, Edie, yes. Edie, I just want to say 